Here's my beautiful wife just after home getting her hair done. Smile to the camera. There you go. Might keep that. Hey guys. Well, this is a really nice lawnmower. I don't know what's wrong with it. I just took the cable off because I can get the cable to move in the sh in the conduit. I'm going to replace the cable and the Z bends. But when uh, my friend Dave said he had this mower that he got cheap, I'm assuming for nothing, he brought it over without the bag. And that's how you turn a $160 mower into a $60 mower. Because this is the point of separation. And let's say, oh, I don't know, it takes me a year to get the mower going because I'm swamped or whatever. It's a pal I'm doing for nothing, right? And uh, the bag is at Dave's. He chucks it out, cleans out the shed. Now I got a $60 lawnmower here instead of a $160 lawnmower. And if he wants to sell it, he could make 100 bucks. And that's this nickel and dime business I'm talking about, guys. I'm sorry for the lecture. Or the rant. Bye. Alright, well now we're going to stick a tire up on the throttle. Because we can't squeeze the dead man brake or the bale or whatever you want to call it. So what I do is I take a pair of slip channel locks or slip lock pliers, plumber's pliers. Something big that you can squeeze. Get it all the way in there. Oops. Come around the corner, poke her in, and then the repairing that cable will probably be the last thing I do to this mower, because I know I can get one or make one. So now we squish this. You see what I'm doing there? But you gotta, you gotta make sure you're, you're set just right. You gotta hold your lips. You gotta stick your tongue out to the right and squeeze that. Almost, eh? I'm going to just, what I'm going to do is, there we go, we're almost there, I think it's done. So I don't think there's any fuel in it, so I'm going to cheat, and this is a manual choke, so we'll just tilt the mower, give her a squirt, a good squirt, because it hasn't run for, probably hasn't run for a couple of years. The oil's black because I just squeezed so oh ah, and I can't pull the string. Well maybe I can. Hello there. Hi. All right. I'm gonna just tear this rewind off of here. Now you guys realize you don't need a fancy tool like that to take off 10 millimeter bolts, right? But I've gone high tech around here. Okay, let's see what we got. Is it just been unwound? I'm just playing with this a little bit. The rope's no good anyway. I'm just gonna see if it'll hold no, it won't hold any wines. So the spring's broken. I'll be right back. Okay, I was just opening the shed and back. I've got one here that's that's got more hours. This is the one I took off the this lawnmower, and this is the one that I found in the shed. Identical. This one's got way more hours on it, eh? Can you see that? Look at the slot. Look at the slot worn out by the rope. And this one's got nothing. So if this all works, I might just uh, repair the guts of this one with that other one. You see? So we're three. We're at three bolts.
Now, do you guys that have shops, do you have do you have a boneyard like I do? You gotta have. Take this off. Oh. You grab this one. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm just putting this little little bracket there for the pull rope. Good. Now, I wonder if it's got enough uh, carburetor spray to fire. Let's find out. Got to be careful. This is, this, you don't know what's going on. You don't know if it's got a bad blade or broken no, no, no. Okay, well that's a good sign. Now let's put a little bit of the white stuff. Go juice, gasoline. See if it'll stay going. Sure did put out a nice puff of blue, uh, a nice puff of black, didn't it? One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand. That's enough. You don't know what's doing. Are you ready? Let's just, instead, we don't have a, oh yeah, we can choke it now. Let's try that. There's the good pile. That's that's another pile over there. So got a little mess because I had it all cleaned up and then I decided to work on this more. Thanks for watching guys. That's a good start, eh? So now let's just do this right now. If we can get this cable to move in and out of this um, conduit. This is, the this is the conduit. The cable is the flexible thing. I'm, I've got it in the vise. I'm going to try and move it a bit. Yeah. If I can get this uh, Z bin to go back and forth in this... Oh, there it goes. That's okay. Now, that cable's no good right to the end because it's, it's got a hoopy cack in there. Do you see that right there? At work, we call those bends hoopy cacks, and they cause lots of problems. Although it's not actually broken, it's raining cats and dogs right now. Although not as bad as some other places on Earth. Funny, we were in a full-blown drought. Farmers were shipping their cattle out to other uh, provinces, and oh yeah, there's a there's, there's a split there. And a hoopy cack there. I'm going to just cut that off right about there. This was a nice wire when it was new. So, uh, what else was I going to work? Oh yeah, I was going to try and fix this. I don't know, it looks to me like a professional's had this apart. Fiddle fairies! Now, first thing I'm going to do is squirt some... Are you still watching? Good. Are you zoomed? You look like you're zoomed. Let's go wide. I'm going to squirt some carb cleaner right through this bad boy. Maybe go from the other end. Ding! In the corner. Just making things 
perfect here. Just hang on. Sit down and be good. I'll be right there. If you're good, I'll get you an ice cream cone. There. Hopefully you can see that. Then we'll squirt some air through it. Okay, that should do it. Now, we've got one end. I think that was there and there. I'll put these ends back on. They look pretty good, actually. So you can you can put the ends back on just by threading these on, eh? And the other one. This one had the broken Z bend as well. Look at the hoopy cacks on that one. Okay, so we've got a new cable for that lawnmower over there, and uh, what else were we going to do? Oh, we put a rewind on it that actually works. So we're halfway home, baby. And Dave's not a rich man, so he doesn't want me to spend a lot of money on this. Oops. Okay, I work with a lot of people that are starting now, and uh, Dave is not a rich man. He... he uh, He's just, you know, starting out, trying to make a go of it. He does uh, junk furniture removals, but some of it's not junk. Like he's, you know, he's got. Okay, you got a, you got an 85-year-old lady. None of her grandchildren or children live in town. She's got a nice, even an oak hutch. Nobody wants it. The kids all want to make the kid for, you know, for the for these, uh, you know. Gen X's and stuff, they want their kitchens to look like the inside of a hospital, you know, like everything's just chrome and beautiful. And that's, you know, that's like my grads used to look like. And, but then, you know, our house is all wood and stuff too. But these young kids don't want it. So there's a beautiful oak curio cabinet and she just gives him a call and he says, fine, I'll take it away if you want me to. And he always gets permission and that's how he makes his side money. And these days, you got to have a side money or a gig or whatever you want to call it because wages are low. Uh, and so you got to have this and then on the weekends and evenings you do other stuff. You know, some guys go golfing and some guys make money selling curio cabinets, right? Alright, my friends. I've got this nice little Honda GCV 190 Craftsman Dirt, dirt Buster. I complained the other day that the uh, owner didn't bring in the bag. Now it's still a filthy mess on the top, but it's all been scraped out from underneath. I have not sharpened the blade or changed the oil. But I did uh, put on my, pardon me, got the tripod on. I did put on my little kit for the Z bend right there, and I used the same little guy up here. That's a $30 saving. Now, you know, when you're in a big shop, you just transfer that to the pit to the customer. Uh, this is a hobby operation that I got going on here. So, uh, we got the choke on. I got some gas in it. I just checked the oil and I added... Okay, get this. I added about 250 mils of old oil. And that's all right. Let's just see if it starts. Squish. Choke on. One, two, uh oh, three, four. Okay, I've just taken the spark plug out and put some spark plug juice right into the piston. All right. So why did it fire the other day? Let's try choking it. the brake on and off. I did not want to get into uh, cleaning the carburetor today. Well, we got to take the bowl off. Oh, it looks sad. we got to take the bowl off the carburetor. Unfortunately for me. All right, my friends. 
We got a little niece. She's a toddler now. She's walking. Bread and butter for lunch. <laughs> so what goes around comes around. I don't get lunch as much as I used to. Okay, I'm going to just pull a, pull a bowl off this carburetor because they are easy to do. 10 millimeter wrench. It looks pretty mysterious. Uh, don't worry about the gas, it's turned off. No, Mick, this hasn't got a screwdriver in it. Hmm, doesn't look too bad. Gas is flowing, but I bet you the jet's plugged up. And I've got just the tools for that. So I'm learning everything about what babies are into these days. It's cocoa, melon, and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, it's cute though. Okay, Bruce, what are you doing? Ah, there we go. So I'm going to use this little flat guy. To take out the main jet, if I can get it in there. Yes, I can. When you guys see this, it'll, you'll be amazed. It was running, so the clog can't be that bad. It must have just picked up a little bit of schmoo, eh? Okay, <laughs> okay I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to pump this up. It's like being on a ladder and reaching down three rungs. I've done that too. There. It's a bit of a battle. Hmm. Should come out. There's a hole there. I don't really want to take this carburetor out of here because there's there's a lot of gaskets and stuff that you you can muck up, eh? Ha, good. So I'll just see if I can use my Zen here. Well, you guys know what I'm trying to do. I'll turn you off and come back. All right, I couldn't get it. Dark dog. So I'm just gonna take her apart. I'm gonna give up. I'm a loser. I've only had about 400 of these apart in my life now. Okay. Bend that out a little bit. I'm going to get the gas line off. Yeah, that's the first time this has been apart. Needle nose on the tiny little gas line clamps today. I'm starting to dislike Hondas because they take a fair amount of work to wake up sometimes when they've been sitting for a few years. I'm just working on the gas line right now. I don't believe it. That's been on there a long time. Dirty dog. I might have to just add a piece to that. Although I don't want to because it's a specialized do hummer chunker. Who dicker. Okay, I need a smaller screwdriver so I can really jam a hole right through my finger. 
Yeah, I just about did it. I can't even get it to rotate, eh? Now, I could probably get that jet out of there without worrying about this, but I, once I'm on a, on a mission, i got to complete that mission. Regardless. Do you believe that? I, I'm stunned. I've never had this much trouble on a... Okay, I'm gonna just get that bugger off. Well, that's one way. Tear it off. Whew. Look at that. That just would not come. I'm gonna cut it off with a knife. And look at that. The jet was almost out right there. Now, the jet that gave me that T also gave me this to pull jets and uh, pull jets and emulsion tubes. It's just a drywall screw embedded into a... Wow, that thing is really in there. Well, I'm going to use my Allen wrench that I got in here to push down on the emulsion tube. I guess if I can't get it with with these good screwdrivers, how could I get it without having to see anything? Eh? Okay, it's right there. Like right there. Must be some hell of a goo in there. There it is. I hope it's plugged. Just for my own sake. Okay, this is the emulsion tube. And it is plugged 50%. And the jet is not plugged. Okay. Let's have a, well, we know the needle and seat are okay, but we might as well take her apart and have a look. Carburetor spray. And I go up at where the screw was on the idle circuit. Right? And I plug that with my finger. And I look into the drive right by the uh, intake manifold and then we should see our three squirters and they're there and they're there so that carburetor should be relatively clean I'm going to just blow it off now air Oh man, I hope that gas line reaches. Okay, so now what do we got on the emulsion tube? We got one, two, half of them are. <laughs> I figured out what my issue is. I just can't seem to stop it. I put stuff down right where I'm standing and I forget where they were when I walk away. Remember, I'm 60 some years old, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yes, it's a four and three. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna just put you to, put, put you to sleep for a minute and I'll come back when I'm putting the carburetor on. Okay, here's the Honda that came in that I was ranting about not having a bag, eh? <laughs> Let's start her up. 